about Carpet Care 101, best practices. So best practices when it comes to equipment. The first step, the most important thing you want to do is to get a high quality vacuum cleaner and vacuum the carpet before you start. If you don't vacuum the carpet, you'll be dealing with extracting mud out of the carpet. You get as much dry dirt out of the carpet first, that's best. Vacuum first, always. With carpet spotters, there's a couple of uh, things that, cut, that people generally uh, need to learn not to do. They oversaturate the carpet with the machine. They put the cleaner into the tank. What you really need to put in this tank is a rinse product, an extraction rinse product to neutralize any soap that you're gonna put down on the carpet, all right? So you get a good spotter. When you have a spot, lightly spot it. Give it a minute or two dwell time, and then rinse the spot out of the carpet with the tool, all right? Use the handheld spotter. This is heavy duty carpet extraction, cleaner, free spray. And you pump this up, you spray it on the carpet, you don't soak the carpet, and you really need some dwell time. You need three or four or five minutes dwell time of that chemical on the carpet to get all the spots loose. When it comes to box extractors, there's a few important techniques. Uh, one thing I'm gonna say first is always when you're done cleaning, rinse this tank out thoroughly and leave the cover on. If this tank dries up, you won't get any of that funky, nasty smell that comes from carts. The other really important thing here most people don't use a wand correctly. And so in this day and age when people have injuries at work, carpet extractors can be one of them. And I'll tell you, a bad practice is when people reach too far and they lean forward and they clean back to themselves and they reach and you will have an aching back, you'll be sweating, you'll be working too real hard. What you really want to do is work perpendicular to the tool and move your body more than the tool. So I'll take a full step over, I'll spray a full step and I spray. I'm not leaning over, I'm standing straight up and I'm getting about a four foot pass. You can move right across the, the carpet. You'll double the amount of carpet you can clean if you adopt this path. Some best practices with the self-contained extractor here. Pull this, back, this machine back while you pull the trigger and it cleans the carpet. Um, this particular machine, you can also flip the handle over and push it to clean. Either way works. On the self-contained unit, there's some uh, extra maintenance steps you need to take that are very critical. First of all, push the lever. The head comes off, and you want to make sure that all the way across this vacuum shoe, it's nice and clear, all right? If there's stones or hair or things, you need to clear that after every single use. Critical. The other thing that's very important, a lot of people neglect, is the brush. The brush on this machine just pops right out. You did rinse this off. There could be hair, there could be carpet strings on it. You need to clean that off every, every, after every use. Also clean up inside under your carpet extractor or there'll be a bunch of debris from the carpet that you pass on to the next job. The final machine I want to talk about is the, the big self-contained unit. Same principles here. Dirty water tank, keep it clean. There are filters over the back motors. Keep them clean. Very, very, very simple. With this, when you're finished, be sure to plug it in. This is a battery operated machine. You can see there are four batteries in here. These need to be charged after each use. In addition, what I put in this machine here is extraction rinse. I have it set so it puts one ounce per gallon of water I spray, goes into the carpet. So that's gonna neutralize my carpet as I go. 
maintenance on this machine is very important. You need to make sure you take the brush off, clean this brush thoroughly. Um, uh, it's also very important inside the area where the brush goes to be clean of debris as well. If this fills up with debris, the brush will be making a lot of noise, hitting dirt and junk in there. So you want to keep this as clean as possible. Next thing that this machine has is the debris tray. It'll catch sand and grit and big chunks of stuff. Take this out and rinse it every day. This machine has two vac shoes, one that goes to each vac motor. And you also want to make sure you keep this vac shoe clear of debris. Very, very important. One final stage to uh, cleaning a carpet, and you want that carpet to dry just as soon as possible. All right, so what you need is a good high quality air mover. Um, the air movers, very oftentimes people have misused these. Um, what I like to do um, is actually, this room is a closed up room if we had extracted this whole carpet. The moisture would get into the air to a certain point and the carpet would stop drying. So if I blew the carp, this, I was just keeping that same moisture going. What I like to do is put this by a door. Actually open that door and exhaust moist air out of the room and that carpet will continue to dry. The faster you dry your carpet, the better that carpet's gonna look.